Hi, Jan Philippe. It's really Hi, nice to spend some time with you talking about these digital rights issues. Now, I know you're already quite well known in Europe for being an expert in this area, but perhaps you could explain who you are and what you do here in the Parliament. Sure. So I'm a member of the European Parliament since 2009, and since then I'm very much working on the issue of privacy and data protection. Uh, we started, for example, by debating in how far it's uh, proportionate to send over all our banking data to intelligence services or all our telecommunications data to intelligence services when they uh, do analysis. And um, we brought in the idea of uh, targeting uh, surveillance, which means that, of course, you should gather data, but only if you have a real risk or suspicion vis-a-vis -vis a, a person. And then later on, and that was my, my uh, latest big work here, we proposed the General Data Protection Regulation, which now is becoming EU law and uh, safeguarding our fundamental rights as consumers also uh, when we give our data to big uh, IT internet companies and get uh, really heavy rights there, uh, which we can better enforce in Europe. And that's a very good step. So this is something that the Greens have achieved for people in Britain and it's basically to do with when you tick that little box when you're buying something online and it says have you read the small print and you say yes but basically you haven't read the small print, right? Exactly and there we get far more transparency. It's clear that you can't like do lawyers text off pages and then expect to give an informed consent to it. Okay, great. So obviously there's a lot of concern across the world and in Britain about this latest hacking attack and the ransomware that's been unleashed, particularly in our National Health Service. It's a slightly techy issue, so I think mm. a lot of people don't really understand what's happened, but can you explain what's happened and what we could do to protect ourselves better? Basically, uh, to understand what's happening, we should imagine that uh, there is traffic out there with cars on the streets, but there's no seat belts, there's no real uh, safety net uh, of traffic lights or signs which protect us uh, from being run over by any car or, so, or something like that. But exactly that's the reality out there in the internet at the moment. We really have a problem because there's no real safety standards and there's no liability for loopholes. And we see now with the NHS that this can really threaten lives in the mm -hmm. end. And so we need to make sure that there's more, more investments in who's taking care about the safety and security of our systems and that companies and authorities have to reveal if there is a loophole as quickly as possible so that we can close it. So I think one of the debates we're having in Britain is how much are Microsoft to blame for not supporting old software and for having mm. bad quality software that hackers can um, exploit the loopholes and how much is to do with poor investment in the NHS so we don't have enough money to buy the latest software. Where do you think the balance lies? I would say that basically Microsoft did a good work in patching it, uh, so that's not really the problem in this case. The real problem is that there was absolutely under-resourced stuff in the NHS and also in other systems, companies, authorities to patch it in time to work on uh, really up-to-date uh, systems and that's why uh, it can't be really done properly if you don't have the personnel which is really skilled to do, do, to do it you're not taking it seriously and so that needs to change but of course we also need to invest in uh, a more secure uh, safe environment which means that for example company like micro companies like Microsoft need to be also liable if there is a loophole and they don't fix it. Okay great. Now I'm getting a lot of emails at the moment about save the link and this is to do with the freedom of information really on the internet. Can you explain what Greens are doing to make sure people still have free access to the news that they need? The, the basic debate is in how far can we ask uh, everyone to remunerate, for example, journalists or other creative workers for their works. And uh, the problem here is that uh, the, the big publishers try to get an extra right for themselves by getting money from us or other companies if they use links, for example. But the artists themselves, the journalists themselves, they don't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. And in contrary, they have the damage because links are not distributed anymore. So they, nobody reads their articles really. So what we really need is a better remuneration of journalists, new schemes, how they can get funding. And uh, some good examples exist where people really get together to fund journalism as crowdfunding, but we could also think about better funding, for example, by public uh, money, uh, because 
real independent journalism should be worth us as something. Okay, no, I agree. So this is really also about fake news, isn't it? Because if we're not paying for quality journalism, if journalists can't get a livelihood for being expert in what they do, then it's just a complete free-for-all out there and people might believe anything. There's no way of knowing what's quality information and what isn't. Exactly, and uh, we really have to make sure that quality journalism and news which really uh, like transmit fact facts really still come into our bubble. And in the internet that's really a huge challenge. And I think a better idea than, for example, texting links uh, would be to make sure that platforms like social networks, like Facebook or also Google, uh, are forced to distribute quality journalism in the same way or even more than other content which they make money out of because it's just advertising or something okay. which support their advertising systems. Okay, great. Oh, well, that's really interesting to hear from you and it's very reassuring to know that we've got a green expert like you protecting sure. people in the UK here and in And I Spursburg. wish you all the best luck Thank and you. I think that uh, the UK needs strong greens in Parliament. Thank you.